So I've always identified more with Scarlett just because she sounds like the, the people that I grew up with. Um, and then as I've done the show, I've been amazed with all of the female officers who come up to me after and talk about how they saw themselves in the captain and that, that struggle of trying to share hope and trying to share love with people and being pushed aside or being yelled at or misunderstood. Uh, and that, it, it always came as a shock to me because I, I personally found Captain hard to identify with until I started talking to more female officers who had had her experience. And then I could see her in them and them in her. And I slowly be became more connected with her. I think that people will come to the show and see that it's never too late to start over. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, God loves you and, and he wants you to be with him. And, and all you have to do is make that choice to follow him and your life will change. So what everybody saw on that stage was what we do every Sunday, and that is just worship. That's just worship God, so that when we come to practice or when we um, come to Sunday mornings, uh, we've already been in that atmosphere of worship. We've already been in God's presence, so that what people saw uh, this, this morning was just the outworking of that. And so, um, yeah, God, God moved and uh, his name was glorified. Glory, Lord, we give you honor. We give you all of the praise. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and you reign in majesty. Lord, we give you praise. Let our chief work as God's messengers, the intercession. In it, we secure the presence and the power of God himself to go with us. Amen? Amen. So our family was really inspired to go ahead and purchase um, an Anglican church in town on the main street. It was built in 1896. Um, we didn't really know what God was calling us to do with the church beyond Isaiah 58, which we as a family read and prayed over. What I'm interested in seeing you do is share your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. And then the end of that um, chapter 58 says, you'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. So as we began just to renovate the space, we just kept praying over Isaiah 58, Lord, make this a space that reaches out to those who are vulnerable, who need to find refuge and shelter. And when the Salvation Army approached us, they asked, um, would we be willing to create part of this space, um, having a shower facilities, three shower facilities, a laundry facility, drying facilities, and a space for people to gather and have a warm meal. So um, when I think about Isaiah 58, I don't think anybody does that as well as the Salvation Army does. They really are literally the hands and feet of Jesus in a community that then actually point to Jesus as the answer to the, the whole in our own souls. So partnering with the Salvation Army truly has been a privilege of a lifetime for us.